All right, welcome back in, Zach. Uh, I, I thought we were going to have a day off. I was getting ready to go get a good lift in, maybe just continue on with my day, but uh, Derek Henry and the Ravens had other plans. EDC was cooking. EDC was cooking while we were planning on having a day to ourselves. Yeah, honestly. Um, but holy shirts and pants, I, I think when you talk into existence so much, you're going to be happy about it, and I think everyone's ecstatic. Uh, actually, uh, is it Br Brian? Ryan, you had to clean up the drywall. I'm sure you ran through a wall. Just about. Just about. I, I will say I did scream. When it happened, like, I did let out a very audible, like, yell. When the, when the Schefter notification hit, like, I, I did scream. Yeah, but like and in all in all honesty, like it just felt like this was gonna happen. It was just yeah. it's like in it deep, deep in my gut. It was like, you know what? He's the Raven. When he was mm -hmm. born, when he came out the womb, Derrick Henry was meant to be a Baltimore Raven. We just had to remind the universe that it was gonna happen. And there was some trials and tribulations, especially over the last 24 hours, and you've seen all these big back sign, and just felt like would the price be too high for Derrick Henry? Well, guess what? The price ended up being right for the Ravens. And Zach, could you yeah. explain a little bit to everyone else the deal for yeah. that Derrick Henry's having? Well, let's kind of talk about the running back market because we talked about it yesterday when we were live on the show. Running back market was a lot higher than people thought. We were thinking a lot of guys, the max deals we would be seeing this year were going to be touching 10 mil a year at most. And then we see Saquon and we see – Josh Jacobs getting these 12 plus million dollar a year deals. And you're like, okay, maybe the Ravens can't get a running back this year. And then even guys in the secondary tier, like the Tony Pollards are getting 8 million a year. And it really started to make you question. And then suddenly late last night, there were the reports that the Ravens are all in. And it kind of, that's when you started to feel the anticipation growing in Baltimore. And in a lot of ways, it was kind of shot down this morning. I mean, it looked like it was going to be a bidding war between the Texans and Ravens and the Ravens were not going to win that. Well, you know what? Thank goodness. The Texans yeah. said, Hey, let's trade for Joe Mixon. Thank you. Bengals. If Ravens yeah. want it, fans want to fa thank Stincy one time. This is the yeah. time right now. Thank mm -hmm. them for not releasing Joe or uh, Joe Mixon and allowing the Texans to make a trade that set the stage. But I think the other part is the age factor that I think, was diminishing mm. Derrick Henry's value. But if you're talking about a guy that's had the best track record, the accolades, yes, he's 30 years old, but I don't think we've seen a specimen like Derrick Henry mm. in some time, maybe ever in the league. I, that's yeah. maybe bold of me, but I, I'll yeah. be recently, I'll be recently biased. The yeah. dude, go watch his workouts, go watch what he's done on the field. He is an absolute force. And I'm seeing some comments here. Uh, I love this, Max. I was in a public bathroom and I got the notification. <laughs> I, I'm curious of what happened. You could share if you want, but anyone else talk to us where you were when you got the news, just because I feel like it's this huge relief and especially seeing how the rest of the, the moves were going down. It finally felt like this was a guy meant to come to Baltimore and he finally is. So I guess, Zach, what does that mean now? What does yeah. that mean for this upcoming season for Baltimore? And you know what, Jared? I agree on the same concept. Who yeah. cares if he's 30, man? Could He could run through a brick wall. Yeah, he could run through a brick wall and then run through 11 guys on the opposing defense. Like, that's what he's capable of doing. And you pair him with this Raven system. You pair him, by the way, with Lamar Jackson. And you're in a place now that really does feel like it embodies what Derrick Henry kind of represents and that's that tough mindset mentality and especially that that runner that Harbaugh tends to love to have on his team yeah in every part of his career Derrick Henry has been the anomaly like he's just physically built you know everyone says he's built diff they're built different built there Derrick Henry's actually built different like that no one human that size with that much muscle should move as fast and as powerful as that man does and that's kind of why I'm not worried about as much so real quick, we see the deal here is a two-year, $16 million deal worth up to $20 million. That's going to be incentives, including $9 million fully guaranteed in the first year. So I feel like this is after seeing that 
it could be it's going to be very easy probably to cut after this year if they want to go elsewhere. So I would essentially say this feels like a one-year deal with a second-year option. And it just I love every part of it because it gives the Ravens that next threat. It now adds on. Lamar Jackson, we talk about how he, you know, the Ravens always have the top running attack with him. So it doesn't matter who the running back is. In a way, yes, because Lamar takes so much pressure off the running backs. But when you have a running back that is so powerful and has to be game planned around, like Derrick Henry, that takes so much pressure off Lamar Jackson now. So now it's not only, okay, we can have a mediocre running back room because they have to worry about Lamar. Now we have a great running back, starting running back, and obviously the rest will fall as that comes with Keaton Mitchell, maybe still Blake Corman in the draft, maybe, who knows. And then you have a better running back room that can help take pressure off Lamar and alleviate those different situations where it gets put solely on his shoulders. Yeah, I mean, and I think also it's just – I don't know. Maybe I'm just more overall just ecstatic that this is finally done. I also did want to make a point here. I saw this again. That this was yesterday. We thought we had like, and that still to me was the funniest moment was yesterday having Nick Moore on, being able to debunk the Will Lutz to the Jaguars uh, deal, and then to find out he's going back to the Broncos. But then the Queen City mistake was Adam Schefter referencing in the tweet before he edited it. But guess yeah. what? Some of us are too quick, and we caught it. Uh, Adam Schefter said King Henry he was trying to say the king is going to the Queen City. The, the problem is Baltimore is the charm city. We know that. Yeah. We just wanted to make that clear. But you know what? If Adam wanted to call it the Queen's, if Derrick Henry wants to call it the Queen City by mistake, we'll let it slide. That's okay. Yeah. You put on the jersey and the pads, no one's going to say a word. Yeah. No and one speaking will say of, a word. Speaking of putting on the jersey, I have been thinking about this for the past like 20, 20, 30 minutes. I hope Derrick Henry, it says, does Derrick Henry wear two from college or take 22 from Pepe Williams? I want Derrick Henry. New era. You know, Tennessee happened. It's a new. Go back to two. Derrick Henry in two. Then you'd have, you know, Lamar eight. You'd have Zay four. Derrick Henry two. Two times four is eight. Hold up. Hold up. Here we go. Two times four, eight. We did something there. Yeah. Ravens are looking like the Avengers. They're getting everyone there. I think I think we're, we're figuring things out here on the spot. And for Max, so we have uh, conversations going on on X and on YouTube. And whichever one you are, if you're on YouTube, hit that like and subscribe. If you're on X, hit that follow button at Zach Bollinger18, at Ryan Ripken. We do live stream, Zach. We typically do them twice a week. But this is now our third stream in 24 hours. Yeah. Uh, but rightfully so. This was the news we were hoping was going to break with Nick Moore yeah. in the building. But, Max, yeah. the Cincy technically is one of the Queen Cities. Charlotte also gets the name the Queen City. Um, tomato, tomato. Uh, Derrick Henry is a Baltimore Raven. So I yeah. think that that – There are the like simple... six Queen Cities, I feel like, in the U.S. Like every yeah. other there's only Baltimore. There's only one Baltimore. Only one and, Baltimore. And there's only one Derrick Henry, and he's going to Baltimore. Yeah, so, well, go ahead. I was going to say, and really, it is funny you brought up earlier. A lot of this is, funny enough, thanks to Cincinnati. Cincinnati trading Joe Mixon to the Texans. Yeah, thank round of applause for the Cincinnati Bengals. They had to uh, c- cut their cap a little bit, so they went with the cheaper option in Zach Moss, and then they said – Hey, not only are we going to, you know, go cheaper at running back, we'll give our starting running back to the Texans so that they no longer have to compete with you and outbid you for Derrick Henry. So that was very thoughtful of them. We're hyped for you. Talk about let's fucking go. This is the energy I love. This is the energy I love. This is why we do it. This is why we do these streams because the energy in here is unreal. Yeah, And also, Tucker, uh, you're a good kid. Uh, I am still unwell. You know what I mean by that. But uh, Marcus Payne just asked, what about Patrick Queen now? What's it mean? There a few other people are talking about that. Very, you know, uh, Marcus Payne right here. Thank you for the question. Another part of it saying, interesting to see what's going to happen with Queen. What about Jadavion Clowney? I yeah. think it's fair to say. And, and, and I love Patrick Queen. I'd love for PQ to stay in Baltimore the whole time. I just feel by every minute of the day, it feels like that. It was already unrealistic. 
It's even more and more unrealistic by the minute, the second. Now, Clowney is an interesting one, but pass rushers are going to get paid quite a bit, especially for a guy that had a good year. But the good thing is Clowney really enjoyed Baltimore. Mm-hmm. It is a fit for him. So he could, but also having said he that. Did, I will I, say he did say his agent said that Jadavion Clowney told him this was the first NFL season he's ever ended happy. Maybe a little discount. Maybe a little. He's still going to get paid. He's going to get a payday. But maybe instead of eight, he takes seven and a half to come here, you know? The only the other scary thing with those two players, Queen and Clowney, I mean, some Ravens coaches did leave. I don't know if anyone saw that memo of the offseason. If you yeah. were a Ravens coach or front office member, more than likely felt like you left. And two of those guys, specifically McDonald out to Seattle, Weaver to Miami, if there's a connection there, you could see – both Queen and Clowney go to a familiar system, see some familiar faces. So that will be one thing. Um, and, and again, if, if this is the report, I haven't seen this yet. But if Queen did turn down $10 million from Houston, he wants to get paid. Zach, we talked about this. Yeah. Apparently, Caroline, Carolina might be interested in Queen. And if you want to get paid, if you want to get paid, maybe go down there. But I don't see anything good brewing down in Carolina with the Panthers. Um, yeah, I would, that that's a so. situation like maybe next off season if they show some more that they're heading in the right direction. But yeah, I agree. Uh, probably not the place I would be going, especially now. Obviously, if they're giving him an insane amount more than every other team, oh, it's going oh, to be hard. Yeah, take the money. But if it's close, man, I, I that's a tough one to go to. Carolina in their current position. Yeah, again, everyone, this is a business. You saw how cutthroat it is. You saw what Aaron Jones, by the way, oh, we can't make a deal with you with the Packers. Well, guess what? We're going to sign Josh Jacobs like, yeah. and then release you and then have you try to jump into the market after running backs are already signing and spots are being filled up. The Joe Mixon situation, they signed his replacement and then we're ready to move on. This business, you got to capitalize on your opportunities. No one faults Patrick Queen. If he if he gets a bag somewhere, go do it. Um, yeah. and, and Tori, you know that's kind of accurate. Uh, and if you're a yeah. Carolina, the only ones that really for, that understand that the Panthers exist are Carolina Panthers fans. And uh, Luke Combs was not happy about the Panthers recently no. because they Actually, traded Brian Burns and who? Whoa! Yeah, let me bring that up because that was hilarious. That Luke Combs went off. On the Panthers. Yeah. And again, if you guys are just tuning in, hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, it's the Ryan Ripken show. We usually do it Mondays and Thursdays, but some of our regulars, like Sean, you've realized that we've been doing this for a couple or 24 hours, our third stream. Uh, we're going to get into a lot of obviously in the baseball season, but it's still football. There is the comment, by the way, from Luke Combs. Uh, for those that can't read it, if you're listening, he, Luke Combs, the country singer, uh, sends a message on X at Panthers. What are we doing? No first round pick for CMC a few years back, and now none for Burns. Are we just firebombing the whole team here or what? I usually don't comment on these kinds of things, but it's just becoming slow torture at this point. So, Panther fan, he's heard. It, it, and, and I think this is also a reminder can we do another appreciation clap for Eric DaCosta? Oh, I mean, beautiful. I'll say I even started to panic. I was like, you you see all those names coming off the board at those prices, and you're like, oh, man, if we're all in on Henry, we're going to have to overpay. And then for him to get less than the big dogs that we thought. I mean, he got pretty much, what, Tony Pollard's deal. A little bit more, I think, with incentives involved. But Mm -hmm. that's Eric DaCosta in the kitchen cooking like usual. Oh, he's cooking. He's cooking. And by the way – I hate to burst the bubble. It's just all for show back there. Uh, but if you'd like me to perform in the future, I'll make something happen. Uh, I'm not the most musically talented, but I've told I bring a lot of energy. And this is definitely a move that brings a lot of energy to the city of Baltimore. This is just something that I felt like it was in the works ever since we heard the rumors at the trade deadline. Mm-hmm. All right, Derek Henry. And then it's like, oh, okay, maybe it's too good to be true. Then Derek Henry kind of confirming it. And then as soon as he said his goodbyes at Tennessee that last game, yeah. it's just like I had this vision. It's like, well, 
we're going to see in Baltimore. And then I had the vision that we're in New Orleans in the Super Bowl, and we win. So, uh, and hey, Kevin, that's a I great way to describe it. Yep. Derrick Henry has a doctorate from the Marshawn Lynch School of Run Through a Motherfucker's Face. That's true. That's all. And that's what, if you watch him, this is what I will say. This is why I'm intrigued to see is Derrick Henry's not necessarily a guy who the first five carries of a game, he's going to have 40 yards. He's a guy that they're going to have to feed a little bit in situations that normally they might go take a pass. They might take a shot, but it's going to be a situation where you have, you're going to need him to get those, you know, 15 to 20 touches a game because he makes his bread, his bread and butter is you are so worn out by tackling him 15 times that now the 18th, 19th, 20th, he's getting these 15, 20 yard gains at a time. And he's just demoralizing you. No, absolutely. I mean, I think if everyone watches Derrick Henry, it's sometimes he'll run for like two yards. Like, well, what was that? And then it's like, well, wait a minute. If you don't get his legs down early by, by the line of scrimmage, that dude runs you over. Or then it's like a minimum of five yards, a minimum of yeah. seven yards. Oh, he's taking it to the house. That's that's the wear down effect of Derrick Henry, is that if you can't wear him down early in the game and you allow him to get the ball late, you are absolutely screwed. I love that reference from Mina. And why don't you read it for people, Zach? Yeah. Derek Hen- Mina Kimes, friend of the program, said, Derrick Henry and Keaton Mitchell is the thunderest and lightningest thunder and lightning pairing one could conceive of. And it's true. I mean, when those two are going to be on the field, hopefully mid-season, Keaton's back, that is going to be unreal. Kobe and Shaq, Lamar and Henry, it kind of feels like that. You know, it's these two, they separate, couldn't necessarily get it done. Do they come together and finally get that ring? Time will tell. I'm just saying, it just feels like, Everyone in the football world, minus Titan fans, because they don't really like Baltimore. And I get it. That rivalry has been renewed. And one of my buddies, uh, Cody Carroll, former teammate of mine, I'm sorry, bud. It's tough. He, 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 he just texted me in all caps. I hate this. Well, we love this. Baltimore yeah. loves it. And, and honestly, too, his style is going to really fit in the AFC North. And just to give more context, despite what everyone might think of the last few years with Derrick Henry, Yes, age becomes a thought, right? Derrick Henry currently sits just under 500 yards short of 10,000 for his career in the regular season. And even last year on a year where the Titans had an up and down uh, season, there's no doubt about it, he still ran for over 1,100 yards and 12 touchdowns. The only year he hasn't gone over 1,000 since 2018 was I believe the one year in 2021 where he got injured and had to miss so much time. He was leading the NFL in rushing, and he still had 937 yards and 10 touchdowns. That's how effective he is. And Keaton Mitchell, by the way, let him get healthy. But there, yeah. the, the sky's the limit. And I'll be honest, Zach, I mean, the Ravens aren't going to be done looking at their opportunities of guys. No. This might be the big splash they make on the offense, but I don't think that they're far from done as far as figuring out what's going to happen. Yeah. And you know no, what? This, hey, I agree. This 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 is something, and I saw the, the cube yeah. said it earlier. Um, and uh, you know, you're, if you're bringing Henry in, you're you're expecting to give him the ball and give him the ball when the moments matter the most. Yeah, and I think that's you know, they're people, and I even made the joke before. I'll hand up, I've made it. What does Eric Henry matter if we only give him the ball six times in the AFC championship? When you have Derrick Henry on the roster, it changes everything in that moment. Because even if you feel like you're down by 10 and you need to get, you know, you need to score no matter what, handing the ball off to Derrick Henry throughout his career has proven to be an extremely effective way to score the football. So now you just add another dimension that this offense was, I don't want to say it was lacking because there was Gus Edwards, but there were times where Gus could not be a three down back and Derrick Henry, although he's not the fastest, he's not, doesn't have the best hands. He has had those. He's shown the ability to go out there and he can play every single down. Yeah. And, and I think 
what if Ravens fans, when you're looking at this, I'm seeing some comments about Gus Edwards going and, and Gus is Gus the bus, one hardball to the other. I think he's going to have a very, very solid role out there with the Chargers. But it did feel like that other presence and, and Hall of Fame players, players of Derrick Henry's caliber, they seem to, when the moment gets bigger, they're going to continue to get better and better. And that's something that we just mentioned earlier. Give Henry the ball, let him keep going. And he's not a guy that is just saying, I, 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 he, let me put, rephrase this. Henry's accomplished so much as a running back already. And the one goal that he wants to do is go win a Super Bowl. He yeah. believes in the system. And he's a guy, as the game gets tougher, he wants the ball in, in, in with a chance to make a play. And who doesn't? Who? What big superstar doesn't want that? Yeah. And Jared, Jared, great question. Go yeah, ahead, I love Jared. this question. Uh, it says, what does this mean for the passing game? Does this balance the offense more? So something I want to talk about a little bit is, you know, even the players in Munkin were open about it. The beginning part of last year, we didn't truly see – Munkin's offense they were still kind of trying to keep it a little bit like Greg Romans they were transitioning the offense and then towards the end when we were seeing the Ravens putting up these massive 30 point games these averaging over 30 a game that was more what Munkin's offense is about and I do think I, I don't want to say it gets more balanced because I think it already was I mean they were the number one rushing attack in the league but I think it's a different type of attack we see Lamar used as more of a decoy he's not going to get as many you know now he's definitely not going to get as many quarterback keepers and stuff because in short yardage situations you know we've had Lamar power for the past three years where he lines up in shotgun next to Patrick Ricard which speaking of we have not even spoken about that we are having Derrick Henry run behind Patrick Ricard imagine being a defender in the open field and you see that you got you got you got Pancake Pat coming right at you, and then by the way, if you're lucky enough to get blocked by Pat Ricard, yeah, then you have to, then you're getting absolutely steamrolled by Derrick Henry. It's kind of a lose lose, but this is the part I actually wanted to talk about, and this was something I wish maybe a little more a little bit more in the playoff game is that the Ravens then can probably be under center more. They can have more two tight end sets or more heavy sets and still be explosive. And I think that's the part that to me is really appealing. You saw the playmaking and ability that Zay Flowers started to show last year. I think the Ravens are still going to go out there and try to get one more wide receiver. But when you have Lamar Jackson also uh, directing traffic on offense and he can make something out of nothing, it just makes the offense more unpredictable. I think that's the, the key thing here is can you continue to make the offense more unpredictable? And then when you have to, use your brunt force to put games away, which usually the Ravens do a great job of. And by the way, if you're new to the channel, uh, hit that like and subscribe button. We do this every Monday and Thursday, except when Derrick Henry signs or something yeah. wild happens here. And we usually cover a lot of Baltimore sports. I know a lot of people are talking about um, uh, we talk, the Orioles are coming up. And I saw a comment here in Khan. Great point, because I think that this is 2024. Speak what you want into existence, everyone, by the way. If you – Want to go accomplish something personally in your own life? Go do it. Speak it into existence. Like, I'm trying to have that mantra. And why not here? Ravens season ended. Cannot wait for baseball. After the Ra Orioles win the World Series, Ravens win a Super Bowl. Boom. That's not being – Mark that's it down. Being, yeah. I, you know what? If you're going to say that that's biased or being overconfident, that's cool with me. I'd rather have that type of energy for 2024. And, and it should be interesting. Now, the Cowboys – that was another fit that could have gone for Derrick Henry, obviously, because they were hoping Tony Pollard was going to be that do-it-all back last year, and it proved that obviously he couldn't fit the same role that Zeke brought to his game, especially when Zeke was prime Zeke. And correct me if I'm wrong, Zach, J.K. Dobbins heading to Dallas? Is that, is that – have... Was that a rumor? I haven't seen it. Someone was mentioning it about it, so that's why I was – We'll need, we need Nick yeah. Moore back on for our full no, no. source. So yeah, no, no, it is a rumor because I just saw a few. Uh, Des Bryant actually just tweeted yeah. out that. And, and, and actually, Cowboys, I wouldn't hate that for J.K. I, no. I think that that would be actually a great landing spot for him. And, yeah, this is the baseball news we were talking about, eight runs and two innings for the boy. Like, what is happening today? This is, it's this a great is day for Baltimore sports. It's the, it's As the a good energy we're talking about. 
Within 30 minutes, Derrick Henry signed and Jordan Westberg hit an Earl Weaver special. How can you not have a better day in Baltimore? Yep. And Justin Matabike re-signed officially or his press yep. conference yesterday uh, and got it before the deal with Christian Wilkins and Chris Jones and who got massive deals. And I think that's something that people don't haven't quite understood or really taken in consideration. Derrick Henry's a little bit like the icing on top. The main goal of this offseason was you cannot lose Justin Matabike. We talked to Mina Kimes about this, about losing guys like Mike McDonald and potentially Patrick Queen and all these Geno Stones. And she even said to us, she was like, yeah, that hurts. But if that spine of the defense, the up the middle, if you have Matabike, Roquan, and Kyle Hamilton, she was like, those three up the middle, if you have that spine, that defense around it's going to come together no matter what. So that was the goal. And then for them, not only to get the, you know, have to franchise hang, but get the deal done before free agency, free up cap room, and before those massive defensive tackle contracts got signed by Chris Jones and Christian Wilkins. So honestly, a masterclass offseason already by Eric DaCosta. Yeah. And, you know, maybe this will go into a different realm. Next season, we'll also talk more like fantasy football in this sense. And the only reason I'm bringing this yeah. up now, the amount of stacks. That will be Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson. And I try to steer away sometimes. I like to have at least one Raven on my team just because yeah. it makes me feel good. But I also don't – it's Ravens first, fantasy and everything second, yeah. right? And, and quite mm -hmm. frankly, I just want the guys to do well. Who cares? Having said that, having said that, could my irrational thoughts go to Derrick Henry and Lamar Jackson having to be on a team? Yeah, I think I'm going to think about that every single day until yeah. draft night for fantasy football. So, um, and I even like it way more than Jalen Hurts, Saquon Barkley, because one of them is getting tush pushed into the end zone. Uh, yeah. but, but Con, and thank you. And we're so happy you can join us today, Con. I know your schedule has been tough uh, and I know things have been off, but we're pre we appreciate you and we appreciate everyone in the group, group chat. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, every single day. If that's what we're talking about with Derrick Henry, every single day, it's March 12th. When draft night's in August or September for the fantasy football, that's what's going to happen. It's going to happen. But also, yes, Ravens over everything is also the other part of it. And that's that's where the allegiances lie. Um, yeah, I will no say, like you it. said, this is going to affect my fantasy football because, like, I have been – I don't want to say against Derrick Henry in fantasy, but I think it was because of the whole rivalry with the Titans. I didn't want to root for him. Now I'm going to be like – I'm going to reach for him. Like if I'm in the draft round one, like, and I'm probably sitting at that six, seven spot, he's available. I'm probably tossing up Derrick Henry. You know, I'm probably going to go for it. And that, I'm okay with that. I'll, I'll go Derrick Henry, Kyle Pitts, one, two. I'll let my whole season get ruined. But like you said, it's all about it. Yeah. And, and if you're just tuning in here right now, uh, Ryan Rickman show is a special stream. Hit that like and subscribe button. We're on YouTube and we're live on X, but we, I realize we're trying to comment on both and we appreciate all the interaction on YouTube. So if you do have a YouTube account, hop on over, hop in that chat as well. Uh, we do see things on X, Twitter, whatever you want to call it, like Gunnar Henderson winning the MVP. Actually, Thanks. we're going to have more, I guess, betting content or things for you to think about for the season. We can't release what we have yeah. in the works here, but I know you guys are going to want to be involved. But we – I – I love that pick for Gunner. I that dude is on a mission. Um, let's uh, let, let's continue on though. I saw some more conversations. Uh, I, I again, we'll just for those that are just tuning in now, we addressed a little bit with Patrick Queen. Would love for PQ to be back. PQ yeah. would love to be back, but that bag is going to be much much bigger outside of Baltimore, and you really have to think about your future. And people can say, well. What's going to be X amount of million dollars? It's $5 million here or $3 million. This is the chance for them to maximize their career. And for Patrick Queen, if he's able to maximize and he loves the deal, I'll be super happy for him. Um, but, you know, uh, on the flip side, uh, Trent Simpson, super excited. Super excited for him to have the opportunity. What do you got? What I was going to say, I love this thing. And Ravens target draft, Audric Estime. Audric Estime is, for those who don't know, just a massive running back out of huge. Notre Dame. Just huge. So that would talk about just putting fear 
in the zone. If you lined up, you could do three backs in the uh, three backs in the backfield. Have Patrick Ricard, Estime, and Derrick Henry. People wouldn't know what to do. They would probably quit. Yeah, I I don't think people would really know at all what to do. I I, I don't think people fully know what to do right now with the Baltimore Ravens. Just the excitement and. I, I'm so happy. There's so many things. And, and we brought up the point before Mina Kimes talked about the thunder and lightning with Keaton Mitchell. Keaton Mitchell, what pained me was seeing the injury in person in Jacksonville. What makes me so happy, though, is seeing that Keaton Mitchell was figuring out at the NFL level how good he can be. And now you don't have to feel the pressure of being rushed back. The Ravens, hopefully everything goes well. And when Keaton's ready – you're going to see a chance for him to really continue off of, which was a very promising end to his season. Um, and, and the other part here, this is this is the, the run game matters in, in the NFL still. I know it's a passing league, but this is why it's it's so important because once you get later into the season, I mean, hell, the Chiefs being able to run the football against the Ravens in the playoffs, even if they weren't getting a ton of yards, the threat of running the football – makes a difference. Look at the teams down the stretch. The Chiefs ran the ball. The 49ers ran the ball. I know people were talking about the Ravens in the playoffs. Oh, my God. Patrick Queen just signed with the Steelers. No, he did not. No, he did not. No, no, no. Zach? Three years, $41 million. Are you? Zach, Zach, you better pull it up or I'm not going to believe you. I'm not going to believe you. Do not. Do not fuck with me. This is T. Are, are, you, are, are you are you messing with me? Ollie now is pissed. You ruined Ollie's day. This is oh bro. <laughs> oh my god. First Geno Stone, now this to, is it too early to take out the tequila? That's crazy. I'm happy for him. I'm very happy for him. Yep. Um, I truly am. We're waiting. I, I hope Lamar hits him with the "You're dead to me." You're dead to us. Tweet like yeah, he's so, dude. you're dead to me. <laughs> <Mark too. laughs> yep, Jeremy. Hey, you might as well add that to the damn thumbnail now, too, Zach, or or to the tags. Yeah. Holy shirts and pants! And I thought we were going to get off the stream in maybe a few minutes. Well, yeah, guys, Zach, Matt uh, not coming back to Baltimore. Yes, Darwin. We just saw that. Um, I'm not, I'm gonna be honest. Good move for Pittsburgh. I, I that's a he's gonna fit in just because he, that defense is good. Do I like this at all? Absolutely not. Yeah, that is uh he went from he honestly what okay, the Batman quote. Uh you you either live your you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. This I kind of it. just happened. Good luck. Yeah, Jack well, Henry. I'm glad uh, we have that. That is – that is actually uh, crazy. It real, Why couldn't Geno Stone and him just go to the Seahawks? Everyone just thought that was happening. Like, I would, that was going to be – I go wish Patrick – Go to the Dolphins. Why, Somewhere I wish, Patrick, I wish Patrick Queen went to the Panthers. Now, now they did this. I wish you went to the Panthers. <laughs> what? Uh, and, and what you know, this doing? is a good point, though, Darwin. I mean, the Steelers, you can say what you want. They have done a tremendous job against the Ravens and Lamar Jackson, even though I, the last few times the Ravens, maybe if they've not been at full strength, but the Steelers are a great defense. And the weirdest shit happens when you play Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. That's a fact. You'll either play the sloppiest game ever and they'll win a game that they should never win. Or then the Steelers are going to lose to a two-win Cardinals and Patriots team, which also doesn't make sense. Um, huh. But, hey, Baltimore, get up. Hey, uh, you know what? We're all positive here. We got to keep Queen. We got the King now. So, um, unfortunately, uh, we're going to um, lose the Queen, but we got yeah. to keep, keep the King. Yeah, unfortunately. Um, yeah. It, you know, but, okay, I want to bring this point up, though, for a second. I appreciate this. And if you're new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe. We just found out that Patrick Queen is going to be a Pittsburgh Steeler. I'm fine. You're fine. It's fine. Um, but 
for those that are listening here, because we'll put this on the audio after, seeing that tweet, I don't believe players should be allowed to be traded to same division teams. Seemed like it's the best way to spy. You know what? Teams, after they're released from uh, teams or on practice squad and they get picked up by opposing teams, there is a component of trying to get more information from those guys. In this circumstance, I, I'm curious what the other offers were out there for Patrick Queen, but this is a big deal for him. You know, and really, yeah. the last two years, he played himself into this contract. He played himself into being a guy that completely changed uh, his outlook, especially financially as a player. So I don't, as much as I joke about this, I, uh, I'm i happy for him. Like, I'm happy that his back secured as a Ravens fan. Yeah. No, I don't like it. As well, okay, for, so for here's Peter the thing. Man, happy for him. What happened? So this, I completely forgot about it. Patrick Queen and Mike Tomlin had like beef. Remember Mike Tomlin said Patrick Ooh. Queen wasn't a real Raven and all this oh. stuff. And Patrick Queen was like, he doesn't think uh, like, you know, that he's like good and not that he's not good, but he was, it was after, I think it was either before or after a game and a question was asked about Patrick Queen and mm -hmm. kind of Mike Tomlin insinuated that Patrick Queen wasn't a, tough hard-nosed linebacker like the Ravens usually have and kind of said and this was a little bit before I guess he really took he kind of taken off yeah I guess this was this year so yeah this is that is kind of crazy yeah you know what um I that to me a lot of talk and quick the Steelers front office and Mike Tomlin felt very differently about PQ by landing by making this deal I mean and also, what did I tell you, Zach, when it comes to paying players and and things when you have beef before? What's what's the what happens when money's thrown around? Money talks. Money talks, and money money talk loudly in this circumstance. Uh, I know people are talking about uh, the yearly value of saying it'd be maybe thirteen and a half a year. Uh, do we have any more updates on what the guarantee would be? I think that's where I'd be curious. But you do yeah. feel that overall, it, it, I think most people are thinking it might be 16 to 18. Um, you know, it's it'll be curious. I, I, I'm with you. I think the Queen is going to do well in Pittsburgh. I think that's actually, as far as structure wise, it's a good place for him. Yeah. Well, um, Adam, Adam Schefter did just tweet now Steelers linebacker Patrick Queen will be trying to bring down Ravens running back Derrick Henry, the NFL. The NFL. the NFL and can we just can we just have this in baseball hey you know what and even bigger news the Giants just signed Drew Locke go get your bag Drew Locke <laughs> bro that's I, we, we we brought this up yesterday on the show and I just want people to get perspective of why the NFL this is why like we jump on to do this so quickly if we have the time is because NFL free agency is just like that. It just happens. Things just out of the out of the blue would happen. Uh, the MLB, there were there's still some of the best players that are not even on big league teams right now. And I mean, here's here's like my favorite, I guess, uh, part I I mentioned yesterday, or or an analogy. I don't know if it's an analogy. I'm not getting my words out. Here's the thing: MLB free agency started in November. Russell Wilson was the starting quarterback for the Denver Broncos in November. So that would have been, I don't know, halfway through the season or towards week 10. I forget how you want it. Week 10, 11, whatever it would be. Russell Wilson since then finished the regular season, got released by the Broncos, and then signed with the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Blake Snell and Jordan Montgomery still are not signed. Two of the highest-priced free agents in MLB. And Jordan Montgomery just helped the uh texas rangers win the world series so yeah hey appreciate you rick also super sick rick, rick regular good to see you good to see you make the stream yeah i mean this is this is why the nfl free agency is so top tier this is why we want to go live as soon as it went as soon as it started yesterday because this is the stuff where like in baseball you're lucky if you even get a, a single rumor a day out of any of the top pro, top uh, free agents. And then in baseball, 
There are teams, it hits 1203, and there are teams you didn't even know were talking to people are making like seven moves at a time. I mean, it's just, it's madness. Yeah. And also, this goes to the point, would you rather chase legacy or money? I think it's when people are at different parts of their career, you know, and that's, I'd be curious just to see what the other deals were out there. And for PQ, understanding of seeing what some of the other. Oh, I think we lost Ryan for a second there. So while he uh, figures that out. Uh, yeah. Chief Tom, uh I think Simpson is the next man up. And actually, funny enough, he balled out against the Steelers in his most, I guess, his big, not tryout, but his his most played time. You know, week 18 against the Steelers, a lot of the starters were sitting, and he put on a show. And in a lot of cases, I think that's when the fan base felt better about the situation with Patrick Queen because throughout his time at Clemson, Trenton Simpson was seen as a top linebacker in football. I mean, he's he's kind of that hybrid where he's – I don't want to call him like a Kyle Hamilton type, but he is in that range of he can do it all. He's going to be an athletic freak. And – I think that's where I think that's where it's going to take off for him because he can play off of Roquan Smith. And that's the biggest thing is no hate to Patrick Queen. He is a great player. He was really taking his stride last year and the year before, but we saw how much a player like him benefits from playing next to a Roquan Smith because he was absolutely unreal in big moments because Roquan, I mean, other teams have to account for that. Let me try to get Ryan back in here real quick. If you guys could hold up a second. Uh, there we go. Okay. Let's see if that, if that works, his uh, computer died. So that's awesome. But yeah, I do think playing next to Roquan Smith is even going to help Trenton Simpson. You know, I think we're going to see that same type of development and I would not be shocked to see we saw the Ravens bring back in Malik Harrison. That was a very good signing that kind of fell underneath the radar, I think, in a lot of cases. That's a, not a flashy signing. He's not a guy that yesterday, of course, under all the Twitter comments, it's this isn't Derrick Henry. That's not Derrick Henry. Malik Harrison, not only is he one of the better special teams guys on the team, he's probably the best edge setter on the defense. I mean, if you go back and watch last year, if you watch the film in so many instances, Malik Harrison kind of went out there and he was setting the edge. He was going and making tackles for loss and welcome back. Ryan, are we, uh, we doing better? No, we're not. Um, my, my computer overheated and turned off actually while charging. Uh, you hate to see it, but that's I'm, just how much action is going. I think it's because the chat, was so I, active. I think it was just reacting to the Patrick Queen news, like the rest of us. Just like, just like a lot of Ravens fans, my my computer is sick. It's they're they're sick to their stomach. Enjoy life. I know it was fun while it lasted at the Zach Bonder show, but Ryan Ripkin is back. So Ryan, we we're talking a little bit about kind of next year, and honestly, the impact of the Malik Harrison signing, just how that also helps in a situation like this, because. He was a guy that he has shown progressions each year, and he became a bigger part of the defense each and every year and has taken strides. I think he's one of those people that maybe we don't see Trenton Simpson getting all the snaps next to Roquan at first. I think Malik Harrison is very capable of holding that down and even thriving in that position next year. Yeah, it's a sneaky, solid sign. I think that everyone wants to look at the the, the big hitters but I think the Ravens' depth is going to show more with, with the move. And quite frankly, the, the Ravens just have done a great job of overall, at least in that department, of, of replacing. But Malik should have a great opportunity to continue to show what he can do and, and to continue to create himself as an all-around player. Um, you know, Simpson's going to have a chance to also do his thing, right? But so, I think Ravens fans, it stinks, but you still feel really good about 
what was happening. And again, it goes back to this right now with Ravens fans. Would you have rather lost Matt Abike or Patrick Queen? And I think a lot of people right now are going, uh, if they lost Matt Abeeks, it would be hurting a lot right now. And I guess they use Matt Abeeks. That's what Nick calls him all the time. So I guess that's what all the cool kids say. Yeah. So. And Sam, I agree. Let's talk. Let's talk a pitcher to the O's into existence. Yeah, we're talking we're, in. Yeah, we're we're in the uh, business of talking things, everything into existence. Yeah, what a crazy! I did not think this stream when we started it with the excitement of uh, Derrick Henry. And let, let's get back. You know, honestly, let's get the vibes back up. Derrick Henry's a Baltimore Raven. All right, Derrick Henry's a Baltimore. Thank you. Yeah, Derrick Henry's a Baltimore Raven. I think that's just what we have to focus on right now because we saw what Derrick Henry, how dominant he can be. And we've also seen, you know, the Ravens defense be as dominant as it has. You know, I think it starts with Roquan Smith. So like you said, as tough a decision as it is, and you hate that you have to choose between one of them, I think the Ravens, they you already had another middle linebacker. You know, if and it's not, if the Ravens had a star nose tackle as well that was sitting there that they'd already paid, they probably, and not Roquan, they would have picked Patrick Queen over Matabike. It was, I think, solely based off position and what yeah, they mean, had. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, the Ravens have a quote-unquote star on each level of the defense right now. You got Matabike at the line. You have Roquan Smith in the middle. Then you have Kyle Hamilton that kind of does everything. And by the way, don't sleep on Marcus Williams again for this year. Marcus Williams got hurt early in the season, didn't have an arm, it felt like, for – the majority of the year he's playing one-handed they're going to have some playmakers on the back side but Kyle Hamilton Roquan Smith and Justin Matabike three guys that are going to be at different levels of the defense you got to feel really really good about that foundation that you have yeah. and then by the way let's still remember while we're doing this stream you now have Lamar Jackson paired with Derrick Henry in the backfield and you are going to continue to find ways to get this offense more comfortable, second year of Todd Munkin, people are getting excited. Talking into existence, I still think the Ravens are going to be. I've been asked this a few times, so I will answer with, I would say I was more excited about Burns because I think Burns came out of nowhere. Like we were just well, Henry. Henry was kind of like over the past. You know, they were sitting there with over the or. Trade deadline, they wanted him. Like, this always felt like something that was coming to fruition. And then all of a sudden, like, the you know, all this morning, it was there's talks with the Ravens. They're interested. Whereas then suddenly we were sitting there. We had just finished the live stream, and it was like, oh, Corbin Burns is an Oriole. So I think the surprise factor, but they're both just incredible feelings. Yeah, you know, it's in 12. Just leave it at this. Had had a feeling – Something was yeah. brewing when the with the burns. I just didn't know the full specifics. I'll leave it at that. But I think for Orioles fans, it was more exciting because the Orioles haven't made a move like this in a while. Yeah. So fans were all uh, just ecstatic. And I'm happy also for D.L. Hall and Joey Ortiz to now have a chance to do what they can do. But Burns was the first move for the Orioles of going, well, damn, we haven't done this. I could get used to this and having a bona fide ace. But the Derrick Henry deal, I think right now, is just a player that Ravens fans have just wanted. They just – people were so frustrated with the Titans because Derrick Henry is so hard to bring down. And deep down, every Ravens fan is like, you are perfect for what we do. And even if you're not the Derrick Henry that was four years ago, you can still be a Derrick Henry that can help take it to the next level. So I'd say definitely more for as far as the Shocker or Orioles fans will probably be the, the top. but. Mm -hmm. uh, personally, for me, I guess, I guess in both cases, I thought both were going to happen because Derrick Henry was born to be a Raven, and there was things brewing about a pitcher coming to Baltimore for quite some time. Yeah, I think it's just – it's exciting times no matter – I mean, next year is going to be such a fun year in Baltimore sports because, you know, it's like one of those things you look at. You know, it's, it's all these new toys. You get Corbin Burns. You get to watch them. You get to watch all the young stars, the Jackson Holidays. Those guys come up. And then with the Ravens now – you get to watch Lamar Jackson and them go off into another Super Bowl run, hopefully. But you add in Derrick Henry. So another little fun thing. We get another year of Zay Flowers. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun right. year. That's for sure. 
it's going to be good. It's going to be fun. And also, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that like and subscribe button. We usually are on a schedule of Mondays and Thursdays. We're going to add more days as baseball season continues to unfold in my schedule for uh, doing coverage and my duties. But this is going to keep running because this is something that we're really passionate about. Uh, last night, we did – or yesterday, we did two streams. We did the NFL free agency. Then we did a more uh, Orioles, Baltimore-based stream later in the uh, evening. And we actually put out a Jackson Holiday breakdown. So if you're like Jackson Holiday, if you're an Orioles fan, I think we have a few in here. Go check out the breakdown that we just put up. And we also have breakdowns of other players like Jorge Mateo, Jordan Westberg, uh, Grayson Rodriguez, another young stud. I will say, personally, I think Grayson one is my favorite, that one. Just because Grayson gets me fired up. Just how explosive – he is pitching and just the fire he brings gets me fired up. Oh yeah. So it was all, all that's up there, but we're going to obviously cover a lot of football because yeah. everyone loves football. You, you see and hear uh, the excitement that people have. I mean, the fact that everyone wants to jump right to this right now. And we appreciate you guys being a part of this with us. Um, and if you're listening on X two, hit that follow button for at Ryan Ripken and at Zach Bollinger 18. It's up there. You actually were smart with that. I should probably put, mine in the uh the name yeah you see. but the sh- but the show is named after me technically so. yeah exactly so people will know and then real quick o-line round one or skill position i'm going to trust eric da costa obviously wherever he goes with it depends on the board when you're picking at 30 it's you know it's not like when you're picking up front and you get to kind of know who's going to be there this is you're going to see which position gets runs and i also think it depends on you know, the rest of the off season, I would still personally love to see another wide receiver. I think they have two good wide receivers. I think they have their one, two, and four on the roster. I think you have a really good one, two with, yeah, one, two, four, you need a three. Aglor's your four, Bateman and uh, Zaire, your one and two. And now you get, you get that number three and we're set. I think I would love a, would love a skill position round one. But I also think you got to be smart. And if there's a good tackle, this is an incredible tackle class. If there's someone you can get that can come in and make an impact day one and start, I think that's a no-brainer. Help protect Lamar. Help create some running holes for uh, King Henry because, I mean, let's just make life a little easier for the man. I agree. I also, the Ravens philosophy, as we've seen over the years, best available. I'm going to trust EDC with that. The Ravens didn't need Kyle Hamilton, but he was the best player on the board. They're going to take the best player on the board, and uh, and hopefully that's going to work out for them, just like a lot of picks, especially over the last couple of years, have. And that's oh. what Ollie wants to see, too, what what happened. No, I'm just – I love this. Oh. I love this comparison. Reminds me – Charles says it reminds me of the Anquan Bolden trade in 2010 that propelled the Ravens to a championship. That is the perfect – way to put it this is kind of that move it's getting that veteran that you're like i think this is the missing piece this is the guy that we think puts us on that next level i love that comparison right there i think there's a lot of truth to it and we're gonna we'll see hopefully would love for the same result to happen oh would love for you know and ollie would love love for it to happen he was so excited that he just got his little uh plush hedgehog and was just playing around with it because he's like this is the best day ever the the Orioles are playing well he can't wait for baseball season I'm getting to be at home with him that's like the last thing on his priority right now yeah. with that King Henry sign and I haven't seen Ollie jump with you oh you looked up come here buddy come on come say hi for a second come on and this is oh. my dog by the way he's a golden retriever apparently there's a bark at the park at Camden Yards yes Ollie April 16th come here April 16th Ollie don't be camera shy oh is he being camera shy He's being a little bit camera shy. He also sees his friend in the other yard. It's oh. another puppy. You know? Oh, so like yeah, I'm talking so about there's... priorities. It's King Henry, puppy, are like hand in hand. So, uh, uh, Mip- Joe, Joe, glad you can make it. Glad you can make it, Joe. Yeah, yeah Joe. Thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks yeah. for coming to the program. A little late. I think, yeah, a little late because I think we're wrapping up here, right? Joe? Yeah, yeah. I think we were. Yeah, we were kind of planning on wrapping up probably like 20 minutes ago, and then. Patrick Queen decided to, it's kind of like yesterday. We planned on wrapping up yesterday at about like 215, 230. And then the deals just kept coming. A lot of big things. I think we went until like 315. So 
There we go. Ollie finally making his appearance. There he is. There's the good boy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ollie, wait back. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Ollie, Ollie Proud, the official dog of the Ryan oh, the Ryan show. show. There I he think is. He's even he's got his paws on the on the counter. Don't tell mom. All righty. Well, <laughs> hey, Zach, I think that's it. We will be back yeah. for a Thursday stream unless something crazy happens again. Yeah. Um, but that's it for now. But you guys have a day, have a night, and we will talk soon. But this was a special edition of the Ryan Ripken Show. You guys have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys.